every kid has big dreams of what they want to be when they grow up some want to be astronauts some want to be teachers pilots some like donald trump want to be presidents i wanted to be an actor it is the only thing i've ever wanted to be i remember when i was in the sixth standard i thought to myself nah this is just a childish dream when i really grow up i'll know what i really want to do in life and then i grew up and that dream didn't seem so childish anymore and what's followed has been the most challenging and most rewarding four years of my life the indian film and television industry is one that's really disconnected from every other industry unless you're actually a part of it you probably don't know much about it because most of what people do know about this industry is what they read in the newspapers and page 3 in gossip columns word of mouth essentially you know what they want you to know so through the course of this talk i'm hoping to share some of my personal experiences and my stories and maybe bust some myths that's been circling around bollywood for a while now my name is anisha shah my father's name is himan shusha he's an engineer by profession my mother is sonia shah she's a fashion designer by profession my name is anisha shah i'm not a khan and i don't speak from the epiglottis i am not a khan i am not a kapoor i am not a chopra i was a regular girl trying to break into an industry where not belonging to a film family basically makes you an outsider and that was a huge challenge for me because everywhere i looked there were star kids getting launched by the biggest and best producers and directors this industry has to offer and i'm not just talking about kids i'm talking about someone's nephew and someone's niece and someone's mother father's aunt's dog's trainer it seemed like everyone belonged to a film family except me but then i also discovered that no matter what your last name is they cannot ignore talent so i realized that i had to become fantastic at my job so i decided to study and train and work on my craft and my skills every single day for more than a year before i even joined the industry they wanted quality and skill so that's exactly what i had to give them when i did join the industry i started off by working in tv commercials i started auditioning every single day and i got my first ad and it was an ad for airtel and it was so exciting to see myself on tv for the first time i think more than me my friends and family got a huge kick out of it and they would keep calling me the airtel girl and if i sing the song of that ad all of you are going to kill me because it's going to be stuck in your head i'm sure it's familiar to all of you it goes jo tera hai wo mera hai sounds familiar right that was my first ever ad and then four years later i had done over 30 tv commercials and in that span of time i had become the docomo selfie girl the venki chicken girl the mcdonald's girl and everyone around me thought i had the best job in the world because i was dancing on buses and i was flicking my hair over my shoulder or i was eating bowls of maggi just to get a perfect shot but what people didn't know or maybe what they just didn't realize was i had to go through so many rejections before i got any one of those ads and that's what brings me to the first myth that i want to just bust it's not all glitz and glamour in this industry Yes there are long flowing gowns as perfect hair stunning makeup all of that but that's not even remotely what the day of in the life of an actor is like I'm not a numbers person but let me just try and put it in perspective somewhat I read somewhere that there are over 2000 individuals from all over the world that come to Bombay every single day to make it in this industry Now that number seems high but it's actually quite believable for me because when I go to an audition I spend maybe say 30 minutes in a waiting room In that time the casting team can probably audition about 8 girls and the audition lasts for 9 hours a day so that's over 100 girls that day itself who've come into audition for the same role as I have and then each audition lasts for 3 days so that's over 300 girls that are part of my competition for that one role in one ad and mind you I'm not going for one job interview I go for multiple auditions every single day so it's like I spend 29 days out of the 30 in a month going for auditions or rather going for job interview after job interview after job interview and getting a call back saying sorry better luck next time rejection is such a big part of this industry it's the rate of rejection for any actor is so alarmingly high that it really ends up making you question your own self your abilities you know was my audition good enough am i doing this right is there something else i can do and the worst of them all am i good enough i think every actor faces this internal struggle um about the choices that they're making but then after rejection after rejection when you get that one phone call from a casting team saying okay you got the job it makes it so worth it 
because as an actor it's very hard for me to describe the the joy and the thrill that i get knowing that i have the privilege to stand up on a stage or on screen and perform in front of a willing audience now i've been doing this long enough to understand the kind of hard work that goes into every audition and consequently every role i'm sure a lot of you have heard things like he's born with it ye to padaishi talented hai no successful actors have trained and studied and worked so hard on their skills every single day and i'm not talking about going for an acting course or going for regular acting classes actors have to learn to peel away layer after layer of their personality to be able to access that one tiny emotion that they didn't even know they could feel and it's that that allows them to create a moment on screen that causes you as an audience to giggle or sigh or even shed a tear i want to share a small story from my life a couple of months ago i was shooting for a film and the scene required my character to break down in tears on finding a letter from her recently deceased husband now i've never been married and i've also never lost someone close to me so to be able to bring out that kind of pain was a challenge so i had to find something in my life that i could relate to losing a lifelong companion and the one thing i could think of was what i would assume it would feel like if i lost my older sister someone who i've shared a bed with for 26 years and it worked i'm on set crying uncontrollably tears are flowing i'm sobbing and my director is ecstatic he has got just the shot he needs and everyone is happy they're like okay done move on to the next shot this is done but there's one problem me i couldn't stop crying and for the next 30 minutes the entire production had to come to a standstill because i was just crying i had my co-actor hugging me uh, everyone in the cast and crew was kind of trying to console me my makeup artist poor thing was dabbing my makeup so that he wouldn't it wouldn't get ruined but the truth is i had tapped into this deep dark hidden fear of losing my older sister and that was painful the point is we as actors every single day have to break down the walls that we as humans naturally put up we have to do whatever it takes to convince you guys that we are who we, are, we say we are in those 90 minutes now there's a notion that actors are crazy it's kind of hard to disagree with that in a very short span of time i've had the opportunity to play a very wide range of characters whether it's been in web series or tv commercials or on uh, stage professional theater anything um i've played a 19 year old naive bubbly cheerful girl and then very quickly had to switch over to another project where i was playing a victim of cyber sexual abuse i once did a play where i played 26 characters myself in one and a half hours so to be able to mold yourself and fit into the skin and personality of any character that a script demands is extremely challenging but that's the job and sometimes it can manifest itself in wonderful ways like you've seen on screen but sometimes not so wonderful there are so many examples of actors all over the world who have gotten carried away in their roles i'm sure a lot of you know about heath ledger whose uh, obsession with his role of the joker in the dark knight led to his untimely passing christian bale in the movie machinist he lost an extraordinary amount of weight bordering on dangerous being dangerous for his health just for that one role Robert De Niro apparently paid his dentist twenty thousand U.S. dollars to destroy his teeth, so that he would look like he had spent several years in jail for his role in Cape Fear. Now, obviously, these are very extreme examples. I'm I love my teeth way too much to do something like that. But the point is, every single actor goes through a certain kind of internal struggle to be able to fit into that role that they're required to do. and that is something i think a lot of audiences don't see or they don't realize because you guys don't get to see the preparation that goes on behind every role so that's something that i wanted to point out because not a lot of people know that um so while i was busy working around lokhandwala and barsova and all the roads of andheri i got sucked into a completely different world all of a sudden one day and this was a world i had never ever imagined i would be a part of this was the world of sports and live broadcast television Um I was selected to be the anchor for Star Sports for Hero Indian Super League which is India's premier football league. Um and it was a completely different ball game altogether. I was no longer working with lights camera action. There were no dialogues, there were no characters that I had prepared for. It was just me, a whole bunch of football stats 
and a stadium full of 40,000 screaming fans. There are no second chances. This is live television, so there are no do-overs. There are no... You can't make a mistake. You have to get it right in the absolute first chance. Now picture this. I'm standing with... This is the first time I'm doing any of this. I'm standing with Mahindra Singh Dhoni and discussing about the quality of sports education and the quality of sports in India in general. And this is on live television. And I'm looking like I'm calm and composed on the outside. But in reality, I have a earpiece in my ear that allows my director and my producer to communicate with not just me, but the entire crew. So while I'm chatting with him, I am in my ear listening to this. Camera one pan left, camera three zoom in, Nisha turn to the camera. Camera four move, move left, 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 more left, right, yeah, chai pass karna, please. Camera four going in and we're out. Anisha wrap up in five, four, three, two. Nerve-wracking is an understatement. I, I had not expected any of this. It, it just has felt like there were like a million things going on in my head. And I think the only thing I probably couldn't hear at that point in time was my mom and my dad cheering for me in my living room, sitting in front of the television. But it was a great experience. And I got to learn so much just simply by doing a few months of live TV. And speaking of my parents, uh, my mom is crying right now. Amazing. <laughs> uh, when I say that I'm fortunate enough to have the support of my parents through the ups and downs of this industry, that's an understatement. I have come across so many people who have asked me, are your parents okay with it? My parents were super okay with it. They are like my biggest support system. But when I got asked those questions, I realized that a lot of kids face resistance from their parents when they tell them that they want to get into a career with performing arts. And there are different reasons for that. I think a lot of parents think it's not a respectable profession. Some people think it's not a real job. And the truth is, the decision to become an actor or a performer or anything in this industry should not and is not an easy decision. It's difficult, it's scary, it's unpredictable and extremely stressful. But that does not make it any less than any other career that anyone else in this room is doing. I get to wake up every single day and say, I'm living my dream. I'm doing exactly what I love to do every single day. How many people in this world can say that about themselves? And I think the best part about this industry is that there's no formula. There's no checklist of things that you have to tick off before you get in. I once worked with an actor who, at the age of 55, gave up his medical practice to pursue acting. So there's clearly no one right or wrong path of doing this. There are any n number of roads that you can go down and any road can lead to something else. Because when I grew up thinking of acting, I thought of the big screen. That's it. I didn't know there was anything else. But now that I'm in it, I know that there's a plethora of options in front of me. You have TV serials, TV commercials, professional theater. And now we have the internet. We're in an age where everything is going digital. And that's amazing for an actor because the internet allows you to showcase your skill in so many different ways. So I think the, the point is, for any newcomer who wants to break into this industry, the fact that the future of this entertainment industry is the internet, that's great news. So don't let any of the other negatives that come associated with this industry hold you back. I'm not an expert at all. I've only been doing this for a few years. So all I have was my experiences to share with you guys. But I'm hoping I've been able to give you some kind of behind the scenes sneak peek into what it's like to be an actor in the Indian film and television industry. Thank you. Questions? This must be the only this must be the only student body in the world, if not in India, where the mutual fund investor gets an endless amount and the, and, and, and the actor doesn't get a single one. Come on, somebody needs to. That's why we are introducing drama now in the IGCSE. Yeah. Somebody upstairs? Yeah. Um, 
comes to like being an actor, like there are probably people around you that tell you that you can't make it and you can't do it because it's such a hard industry. So how do you cope with all of that? Uh, that's actually so true. And it's not just people. There are so many factors in this industry that will put you down again and again and again. Um, there are people who will tell you you're just, you're not pretty enough. You're not talented enough. There are so many. Um, I think one is you just have to, if this is something you really want to do, then you just have to push yourself. And I think that's the case in any industry. There are opportunities to fail in anything you do. So I think it depends a lot on the confidence you have on yourself. And in my case, at least, it's been my support system, hands down. I, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have been doing this as long as I have. So I think it's just, it depends on the way you look at it, how badly you want it, how much you're willing to shut everyone else out and just look at your goal. Many people see um, acting as a very risky industry because suppose a, a film doesn't succeed or an ad doesn't make, make you popular enough or people don't like your image in general, people tend to often have like a fallback plan. So um, when you go into such an industry, you, you speak about how difficult it is and how you're so busy trying to get the opportunity to get on the screen. So do you think it is a viable option for like people of our age to try to go into the acting industry but also do something at the same time, like something else, like education work? So to be honest, um, a lot of the advice that I was given when I started and a lot of the advice that's available out there right now is always have a backup plan. In my case, that's not even remotely true. Like I said, this was the only thing I could think of doing. So um, I think it's a personal choice. A lot of people do have backup plans. I know a lot of people who are in this industry who are trying to make it in the industry but are also running small businesses on the side. Um, it depends a lot in terms of like the kind of financial situation you want to have at the time. If you think that you are willing to maybe set a timeline of say I want to give myself six years to get into the industry. Or someone like me who's clearly crazy, who's just like I'm just going to live my entire life doing this and figure it out as I go along. Um, it is risky, of course it's risky, it's extremely difficult, there's no doubt about that. Um, so I'm not one to tell you have a backup plan because I don't have a backup plan. But that is advice that you will get from a lot of people. So I think it's up to you if you want to give it 100% on acting or performing or anything, or if you, you'd rather be safer and have something on the side. Uh, sorry. Um, I just want to ask that, um, see, for someone who's you know, aspiring to be an actor, as you said, there's so many people you know, trying to get into this industry and aspiring for the same thing. That even if you're, you know, like the best, one of the best at what you do, there's so many other people who would be as good or better than you at what you do. So how do you differentiate yourself when it comes to that point, right? Because you might be doing everything right, but there are hundreds of other people doing the same exact things. And they're also doing everything right, right? So how do you differentiate yourself? Um, it's not about, I don't think it's about differentiating yourself. I think a lot of it has to do with your timing as well. Because um, you'll have a lot of cases where you'll be perfect for the role. But for some random reason, you don't get it. Or I've, had, I've been in situations where I just wasn't in town when I had to go meet the director, so I lost the role. So I think in terms of what you need to do is just do your best and hope that things work out because it's, it's, a lot of it is not in your control. A lot of it has to do with ads especially. Um, even if you're the best actor in the world, at the end of the day, the client can be like, no, I want a girl with curly hair. Or I want a guy who's 5'8". So you never know, but for you, you just have to give your best audition, give the best take and know that you are good at your job. If you're good at acting, they, like, they have to give you work. It's not possible to ignore you. Why did you choose to get into this industry? Good question. I have no idea. <laughs> um, honestly, it started in BIS. It started on this stage. Uh, I realized when I was really young that I loved being on stage. I was one of those like nerdy kids who everyone would be sick of Founders Day practices and class play practices and I want to go home and I would want to sit and rehearse all day long. Even when I was in college and I did plays in college for my college, I, I, my favorite time was when I was in college still really late just rehearsing. And that's when I realized that this is clearly something I love to do a lot more than the normal person who just enjoys theatre or who just enjoys acting. It, is completely rooted in nothing but the fact that I just grew I grew up loving being on stage. I loved playing characters. I loved being I love being able to perform in front of an audience and hopefully move them in some way. So that's that's literally it. I when I was in the tenth standard I was like, okay, I clearly still want to be an actor. Let me see what I can do about it. And it started from there. 
Thank you, Anisha. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.